In this video, we'll be learning how to use proportions and percents together in order to solve percent problems. So let's dive in and take a look at this example here. It says Mrs. Conway surveyed all of her students on their favorite type of morning hot drink. And then as I read through here, I see numbers, so I'm going to annotate this as I go. Out of 120 total students, 42 of these students prefer coffee, 24 of these students prefer hot tea, and the rest prefer hot chocolate. Now we're gonna use this information in order to answer the percent questions below. So the first question says, what percent of students prefer coffee? Now from looking at this, it might seem like we can't find a percent, but we actually can. We're gonna use our knowledge of fractions and decimals and percents in order to find our percent here. So when I look here, it says prefer coffee. Now I notice here that if I look in the instructions, 42 students prefer coffee. So there are 42 students that prefer coffee out of 120 total students. So I can write that as a fraction and represent 42 out of 120 like coffee. Now, while that isn't a percent, I know how to take a fraction and turn it into a percent. The first thing I can do is I can turn that into a decimal. So here we can take 42 divided by 120 and we find that the decimal equivalent of this is 0 0.35. Now, if I continue thinking, yes, again, that's not a percent, but to turn a decimal into a percent, all I have to do is multiply it by 100. So here we end up with 35%. And that means 35% of our total of 120 students prefer coffee out of this group. Now, if I look at the second problem here. It says, what percent of students prefer hot tea or hot chocolate? Now, because of this word or, I know I need to account for both the students that like hot tea and the students that like hot chocolate. Now, I know there are 24 students that like hot tea, but I don't know how many students like hot chocolate. So we're going to have to do some calculations here. What I know is that I have 120 total students, and I know that 42 like coffee and 24 like hot tea. So what I can do is I can take that 120 and I can subtract out the 42 coffee lovers and then subtract out the 24 tea lovers. And if I do that, I end up with a total of 54 students that aren't accounted for yet. And these are my hot chocolate students. So what I can do here is I can actually write that there are 54 students that like hot chocolate. So I know I have 24 that like tea and 54 that like hot chocolate. So that gives me a total, if I add them together, of 78 students that like hot chocolate or like hot tea. These are both of them together. So now I'm gonna take this information and I'm gonna turn it into a fraction. 78 students out of a total of 120 prefer hot tea or hot chocolate. So I can take 78 divided by 120. That gives me the decimal version, which is 0 0.65. And then I can multiply that by 100 to turn it into a percent of 65%. Now notice, because the problem is asking for a percent, I'm including percent signs in my answer. If it asks for a percent, your answer must be written as a percent. So. Now, this last one here, we are going to find the percent of students that do not prefer hot chocolate. So we gotta think through the not part of this. They do not prefer hot chocolate. Now, I know that there are 54 students that do prefer hot chocolate. However, there are 42 students that like coffee, and there are 24 students that like hot tea. So that gives me a total of 66 students that do not prefer hot chocolate. So again, we take 66 students divided by 120. 66 divided by 120 leaves me with 0 0.55. And if I multiply that by 100, I get a total of 55% of my students. So I can use my knowledge of fractions, decimals, and percents and how they work together in order to turn this situation into a situation of percents. 
So this is the next type of example we're going to look at. And so we're just going to look at this right here. It says, what number is 45% of 62? And I know that this looks a little confusing from looking at it at first. But this is what we're going to focus on for a large portion of this video. And we're going to use our knowledge of percents and proportions in order to actually solve this. Now, before I start talking in this a little bit more in-depthly, I want you to put this particular proportion into your notes because this is what we're going to use to solve these percent problems that we're going to see on the next few slides. So is over of, I'm going to explain in a little bit. Those are key vocab terms that we're going to look for. And we're going to set that equal to percent over 100. And so I'm going to use the example on the last page. It says, what number is 45% of 62. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a proportion here and we're going to use is over of equals percent over 100 to help us. And we need to fill this proportion in based on what we see here. So first thing we see is that it says 45%. This 45% goes over 100 because essentially what we need is we need a fraction that's equivalent to 45%. 45% written as a fraction is 45 over 100. So this is how we are representing 45%. We're representing it by saying 45 over 100. Now, this next part requires us to do is over of, and you might be wondering what that means. These are going to be key words that you see in the phrase. So if you look here, this says of 62. So we want 45% of 62. This is essentially saying that our total is 62. So the of is going to go in the denominator here. Of goes in the bottom. And then there's always going to be one piece that we don't know. In this case, it says what number is. We don't know the is, so we're going to put an x there. So we're going to set this up as is over of equals percent over 100. And then what we can do is we can use our knowledge of cross multiplication in order to solve this. So we can take x times 100, which is going to be 100 times x or 100x, is equal to 62 times 45. Remember, we do numerator times denominator of the other fraction is equal to numerator times denominator of the other fraction. So here we have 100x equals 62 times 45. Now, 62 times 45 is 2790 is equal to 100x. We then divide each side by 100, and we find that x is equal to 27.9. So what this is telling us is that if we did 27.9 divided by 62, our results would be 45% or that 27.9 is 45% of 62. So let's try to solve a few more examples here. So remember, we're going to start by setting each up to be is over of equals percent over 100. So in this first, first problem, I see that we have 60%. So that 60% is what's going to go into my numerator. So I have 60% up here represented by 60 over 100. Then I need to figure out what goes into the other fraction. Well, here I see of 80. So of 80 is telling me the total is 80, and that means the 80 is going into my denominator. Then from here it says what number is, because I don't know what that is, I'm going to represent it by x. So now that I've set up my proportion, x over 80 equals 60 over 100, I can use cross multiplication. We take numerator times other denominator, which in this case becomes 100x, is equal to the other numerator times the other denominator. So this becomes 80 times 60. So here we have 100x is equal to 4,800. We divide by 100 to get x alone, and we have x is equal to 48. Now if we try this with one more example, it says what number is 24% of 120? Well, the 24% goes above 100 to represent 24% in the form of 24 over 100. It then says 
of 120, which means the of 120, the 120 is the total in the denominator. So I have 20 in the denominator with x up in the top. So now I need to cross multiply. So I do x times 100, which is, again, 100x. And that's equal to 120 times 24, which is equal to 2880. And then we divide by 100 to find that x is equal to 28.8. So the number 28.8 is 24% of 120. So we're going to use the same set of patterns to solve different types of problems. So you're going to notice here that the information we're given is different. It says what percent, so we have what percent, then we have of 72 is 54. So we got to think through how that information can be used to set up in this proportion that we've been using on the last few slides. So it says what percent? So it's sounding like we don't know the percent, but we'll come back to that in a second. It says what percent of 72, which is telling us that our total is out of 72. That's our of in the bottom. It says what percent of 72 is 54? So is is the number that goes in the numerator. So we have 54 over 72, and we're trying to figure out what percent that is. Because it says what percent, we don't know what percent it is, so we can just place x there. So we use those context clues in the problem to fill in our proportion. Now from here, we can cross multiply and solve. I have 54 times 100, and that's equal to 72 times x. So I end up with 5,400 is equal to 72x. And if I take 5,400 and divide it by 72, I end up with x is equal to 75. So 75%, remember it's saying what percent is my answer. So I'm not going to leave it just as 75. I'm going to make sure my answer is a percent by writing 75%. So 54 is going to be 75%, make sure you include your percent sign, of 72. So let's practice a few more of these. So this one says what percent of 24, so that's telling me my denominator is 24 because it's got the word of, is 4. That's telling me 4 goes in the numerator. Because it says what percent, it means I don't know what percent I have, so x goes into the numerator. So here we're now going to cross multiply, so I have 4 times 100 is equal to 24 times x. So I get 400 is equal to 24x. We divide both sides by 24, and when we do that, we end up with x is equal to about 16.7. Now, because this is saying what percent, I need to make sure to include a percent on my final answer because it would be about 16.7%. Now, this next one here says 14 is 14% 14 of what number? So when I look here, I notice I have 40%. So I'm going to do 40 over 100. And then I see of what number and 14 is. Because this says 14 is, 14 is going to go up here in the numerator. Then in the denominator, I see of what number. Of is our denominator. And because it says of what, it means we don't know what it is. So we're going to have an x down there in the denominator. Now, from here, we can cross multiply and solve. So we have 14 times 100 is equal to 40 times x. So we get 1400 is equal to 40x. 1400 divided by 40 leaves us with x equals 35. And because this number isn't asking us for a percent, our answer just stains plain old 35 because that's telling us our denominator down here is 35 and that 14 is 40% 40 of 35. Finally, this last one here says 5 is what percent of 60? First thing I notice is I see of 60, so that tells me 60 is going in my denominator here. I then see 5 is, which tells me that 5 is in the numerator. 
And then it says, what percent, which tells me that's what I don't know. So I set up my proportion using is over of equals percent over 100. And then from here, I cross multiply. So I have 5 times 100 equals 60 times x. So I get 500 is equal to 60x. Divide both sides by 60. And I find that x is equal to about 8.3. And then because this is saying what percent, and I'm finding a percent, my answer contains a percent sign. So our last application here is going to look different, but it's actually going to apply what we've done on the past few slides. So we're still going to use is over of equals percent over 100. It's just we have to look for this information a little bit more deeply. So if I look at this pie graph, what I notice is that it is chalked full of percents. So you can see 20%, 30%, 5%, 10%, and 35%. So we have percents here, which means that those can go in this percent category right here. So we're going to use these percents and we're going to put them into this percent category and we're going to use them to solve for missing values. So here if I read through, it says the circle graph shows the results of a class survey that asked 400 students what their favorite ice cream is. So 400 students is our total number of students. And I know it doesn't say the word of in there, but our total number of students is really equivalent to of. It's saying of how many. So in this situation, our of is always 400 because we have 400 total students. So when I look at part A, what I see is it says, estimate how many students like Rocky Road. Well, I know that there are 400 total students. I also know that Rocky Road consists of 20% of my students. So I can do 20 over 100. So by using is over of equals percent over 100, I've almost found everything here. The only thing I need to find is how many students really like Rocky Road. And that's this missing piece that is my is. So what I can do here is I can put in an x. And I'm going to say, okay, x over, 100, x over 400, how many students out of 400 will be equivalent to 20%? So here I'm now going to cross multiply. So I have... 100 times x equals 400 times 20. So I get 100x equals 8,000. Divide by 100, and I find that we have approximately 80 students out of 400 students that like Rocky Road. And that sounds about right. That sounds like about 20 percent. So I can use this is over of equals percent over 100 to also solve these, these situations where I have a pie chart with percents. So now let's give part B a try. So this one says estimate how many students like both vanilla and chocolate. Well, if I look here, what I notice is that vanilla is 5 percent and chocolate is 10 percent. And together, they represent 15 percent of this situation. So I know that my percent is going to be 15 over 100. My of is still 400 because that's still my total number of students. And then I have x. So now if I cross multiply, I have 400 times 15 is equal to 100x. Then from here, I take 400 times 15 and I get 6,000. And then if I divide by 100, I find that 15% is approximately 60 students. So this last example here is a little more complex, but isn't too difficult. It says, how many more students like mint chocolate than vanilla? So what we're going to do here is we're going to find how many like mint chocolate and how many like vanilla, and then we'll subtract. So the mint chocolate is 35%. So I'm going to do 35% over 100 is equal to x over 400. I then cross multiply, so I get 100x equals 400 times 35. So I end up with 14,000 divided by 100. And x is equal to 140 students. 
Then from here I have vanilla, so that's going to be x over 400, but this time it's going to be 5 over 100 to represent the 5%. I cross multiply, so I get 100x is equal to 400 times 5. So then I get that equal to 2,000 divided by 100. So I end up with x is equal to 20 students. So how many more students like mint chocolate than vanilla? We take that 140, we subtract out 20, and we end up with 120 more students.